in a tournament uh so this was a cfc rated tournament which is why my rating is so low uh and yeah so i was playing the black pieces and let's take a look at what happened so my opponent opens with e4 c5 here uh knight c3 so this indicates the close sicilian variation uh, more common is knight f3 typically and then after knight c6 you can play a move like d4 takes takes and then here there's various variations for black to play here personally i play the move g6 bishop g and we have like the dragon setup here where black controls the long diagonal. Uh, alternatively, so there's knight c3 here, so I play knight c6. Uh, g3 here, my opponent wants to play bishop g2. And if I can open a bishop to target the queen side, I play g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d3 here. Here I play d6 because originally I wasn't too sure what I was going to play. Um, I, uh, I actually saw on a neighboring board that my opponent had played the move g6 and I knew that was something in my like sort of something similar to what I usually play with the dragon setup so I decided why not to go for it because um, also against this move order I don't really want to play like the move like d6 because then after something like f4 e5 at some point in the future with the knight on f3 my pawn structure could be damaged so I don't really want to go for that so I played the move g6 first I was pretty sure this was also an option in this opening to put the bishop on g7. It also fits with my opening plan anyway, so that's why I went for it. Bishop g2, bishop g7, d3. And around this point, I remembered that in a previous game, in a previous tournament game, I got in a similar scenario to this. Um, I think it might also be featured on my YouTube channel. It was in one of the games in the North American Open, um, played in Las Vegas about a couple months ago. And I remember that in that game, I had gone for a setup with d6, e6, and knight g to e7 castles rook b8 and something like b5 and i knew my opponent in this game was lower rated than my opponent in the other game and uh, after rook b8 in that game I, i'm pretty sure my opponent played the move a4 which blunted my move b5 and i wasn't really too sure what to play uh however after some analysis i did figure out what to play um and also i'm pretty sure in this game my opponent was weaker so i knew there was a bit of a higher chance my, my plan would come to fruition so here I play the move d6, f4, here I play e6, this prevents the move f5. Here knight uh, g to e2, I play knight g e7, castles, castles, g4, uh, trying to play f5. And here after rook b8, we get into the position I was looking at. Uh, here I knew g4 was a bit inaccurate, although I wasn't too shy to take advantage of it. I considered the move f5 in the game, however I thought this was a bit promiscuous, um, or asking too much of the position, because after g takes, uh, I thought after something like, uh, let's say, e takes on f5, um, this just looked a bit weird for black with the center here and this backwards d6 pawn. I didn't really know how to play against this. Uh, I thought something after like bishop d3, maybe I can play knight into e4, but then this also looks weird because after like something like knight takes, pawn takes, typically you want a pawn on e5 to help support this. Oh, sorry, not in this case because there's a fork here. But in some variation like this, these two pawns look really weird. Um, like after something like let's say knight to d5, this this structure just looks kind of awkward here for me, in my opinion. With this diagonal open as well and potential of getting on this open file, I didn't really like this too much. So instead here, I went for a safer option, which is the move rook b8. Uh, not as good, but it's still playable. So here knight to g3. The idea is to play the move f5. Here again, I do have the move f5, but I didn't really want to go for it, so I played uh, knight into d4. This just adds another protector of the f5 square. So if f5 here takes, 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 and bishop captures on f5, then here black is, uh, then here I know black is better because black is up an extra pawn. There's a lot of activity, and this d6 pawn isn't as bad because I can, in some scenario, I can even play bishop b6, d5 if I really want to. Um, and this, basically, there's no direct way for uh, white to actually take advantage of this pawn directly. And there are no threats here on the king side because something like bishop g6 just consolidates the king side. I can bring my pieces over and basically there's no way to break through. So here my opponent plays knight d2, a logical move, trying to trade off my knight which is uh, serving a purpose with their knight on c3 which wasn't doing anything. And also this helps to, let's say in the future if white can play f5, then this can help them reroute their knight into the f4 square. So here I just continue my plan of b4. 
Uh, if knight takes on d4, I was preparing bishop captures on d4, and after king h1, I can play something like b4. This prevents the move c3, which kicks out my bishop. And if the move f5 was played here, then I was planning to play something like uh, knight c6. I'm not worried about the threat of f6 because I can simply have bishop takes. And if you take here on e6, then after something like bishop takes e6, my bishop is out. I can put my knight on e5, target this g4 pawn. Queen h4 is on the way. Um, and probably black can pursue some type of kingside attack. So instead here, my opponent plays the move c3, logical. I play knight takes e2. I don't want to retreat back to c6 because that's pointless. Queen takes, and here I play the move b4, and my opponent plays the move f5. Um, so my idea with b4 is that if pawn takes b4, then after rook takes b4, uh, now this diagonal is opened up, and in targeting the b2 pawn, I can play queen b6 with the c5 discovery, and also continue targeting the b2 pawn with the bishop here. I can play bishop a6, play knight c6, and put the other knight into d4. Um, basically, there's a lot of moves here that black can play if c takes b4 was played. Um, alternatively, I'm also threatening b captures on c3. So here I thought like f5 was log f5 is okay because it turns to move uh, f6 and I don't have takes here because after f6 takes then there's simply bishop captures on b2 and these two pieces are forked the g7 knight as well as the e7 oh, sorry the g7 bishop and the e7 knight. Um, so basically I have to deal with this threat first. Uh, however, I thought something in this position like bishop d2 was better, um, mainly just consolidating this side of the board. Um, and here, if b captures on c3, I wasn't too shy to break here after bishop captures on c3. Um, the computer here suggests to move e5, but this seems counterintuitive for me because it blocks off this diagonal here. So it looks a bit weird, in my opinion. Uh, so I didn't really go for this. So instead, uh, after b4, my opponent played the move f5 and I played the move knight c6. Uh, this gets out of the way, so the queen also surveys the f6 break. So here f6 doesn't work because simply bishop captures on f6. Um, and there is no e5 discovery here because I can simply play knight captures on e5. Uh, that's why actually here it's important to play with the bishop because if queen captures on, well, here there's also rook captures on uh, f6. And and here e5 also does work because, um, well, okay, never mind. So, okay. Uh, so after knight c6, um, so there is no discovery with the move f6 because after bishop captures on f6 um then here there is no discovery with the move e5 because simply knight captures on e5 um saves the day so instead here my opponent plays the move g5 this is actually quite an interesting move the idea is to play f6 to shut out my bishop um and here i can't actually take here on f5 and get away with it because after e captures on f5 this diagonal now opens up towards my knight so I don't have the time to play something like bishop captures on f5 because there's simply bishop captures on c6, for example. So here, instead after g5, I realize I have to move this bishop out of the way because f6 would simply just trap my bishop. Well, h8, it's basically, it's in prison and I'm basically playing down three points of material. So here I play the move bishop e5, getting the bishop out before the move f6 comes, which would trap my bishop in. And now I'm pretty sure I'm threatening to win a pawn because I'm threatening bishop captures knight and then I can play pawn takes pawn takes bishop takes f5. At the same time, I'm still threatening b captures on c3. So here my opponent plays c captures on b4, which is actually a massive mistake because now my bishop is out. Um, white also has a bit overextended on the king side. There is no really form of attack anymore that white can pursue. And black's plan is very simple with the moves I highlighted earlier. Uh, and also this is an even worse scenario because here, after bishop to e5 and the move g5, now black doesn't. Now white also doesn't have the move bishop to d2 because here there is b captures on c3, um, and here basically I knew that if b captures on c3, I wasn't worried because I would always play rook b2 and I should be able to infiltrate. But I was worried about bishop captures on c3 in the earlier positions. However, here there is the hanging g5 pawn, so here now I have queen captures on g5. So now with the pawn on g5, I'm not as concerned about threats of bishop d2, and I knew that I should be even better here. Uh, bishop to e5, pawn takes, rook takes, and here the move f6 was played. f6 is logical here, because if uh, white does nothing, let's say move like rook b1, just to defend, then here pawn takes, pawn takes, and here I have to move knight d4, and then I can capture on f5 next, and after knight takes and bishop takes, there is no attack for white, and I'm winning another pawn. So here f6, 
and here I play the move bishop a6. Queen b6 was a bit better, but I thought that like after rook b1, my opponent might go queen g5, queen h4, and go for this queen h6 idea with main on g7, and I wanted my queen back, um, like just another step further, just in like well, not necessarily just in case. It's just because I saw some variations where. Uh, once the queen's on h6, when my king's on h8 and rook on g8, which is how to defend against this g7 threat, I could play like a move like queen f8 to then the king, and then the queen, sorry, and kick the queen out. And then afterwards, I still have my queen side attack. Uh, so instead, I play bishop a6, and this also sets up a threat, uh, rook b1, and here I play bishop d4 check. Uh, bishop to e3, and here I play the move knight to e5. This was my plan. My bishop on a6 also attacks the d3 pawn. And if bishop captures here, then I can simply play rook takes, and now I even have more attackers. Here my opponent plays rook f to d1, and here I play the move queen to b6. The idea is I'm targeting now the b2 pawn again, and I have another threat in the position. After b3, I play this very nice move c4. The idea here is that uh, either way you take, then, well, obviously, firstly, let's look at how you can capture. So b captures on c4, this loses to bishop captures on e3, followed by rook captures on b1. Uh, and if you play d captures on c4, then here I can simply play bishop captures on e3, and I'm winning a bishop. And if you play bishop takes, then I can play queen captures on d4, which is what happened in the game. And after something like king to h1, here I can play c captures on d3, and I have this very strong pass pawn in the center of the board, I also have the open c file later on with rook c8, and I can probably double up with like rook b6, rook, rook c6, uh, and I also can bring my knight in at some point to jump into the f2 square or the e3 square. Basically, this is, just, this is completely winning for black. Queen to d2. Here I play the move rook b8. More precise is actually the move knight to g4, which I considered, but I didn't really see anything after rook f1. Um, I'd actually missed, in fact, that there's the move rook c8, because I thought after rook c8, there's something like rook to c1 and then I can't get into the c2 square. But the point is the rooks here, rook captures on c1. If you play rook takes, then there's knight f2 check, uh, king, king g1, and knight captures on e4, winning the queen. Uh, so the rook has to stay, and if you play queen takes, then I can simply play d2. Um, and after something like, let's say, queen to d1, I can simply play bishop captures on f1. Uh, let's say, any capture is bad, let's say bishop captures on f1, this says knight f2 check, forking the king as well as the queen, and, well, the rest is self-explanatory. Uh, so instead here, after uh, queen e2, I play rook b8, uh, basically take a rook c8, and after queen f4 here, uh, I play the move rook uh, b to c8, trying to get to c2, and here after queen h4 and king h8, uh, my opponent actually ran out of time here, but either way it was a losing position, um, basically the idea with queen h8 is that, king h8, sorry, is after queen h6, threatening me on g7, I play the move rook g8, which just defends this checkmate, uh, and then there's no way for white to continue. Uh, in fact, my opponent after the game, well, right before he ran out of the time, hesitated on the move rook f1 here, after king h8, he hesitated here and wasn't able to hit the clock fast enough, but rook f1 was another blunder, because I have the move d2 here. Uh, and if you play something like, uh, let's say rook f4 here, uh, then I can simply play rook c1 check, and uh, after rook f1, or bishop f1, let's say, well then here I can simply capture the rook. Um, oh, uh, so rook c1, bishop f1, then here, uh, rook captures on f1 is actually a funny way to lose, because actually here there's queen h6, and then after uh, something like rook c1, there's actually rook h4, so you can't actually capture the rook. But after bishop f1, there is the alternative move here, uh, which is simply the move quite quite the stylish move knight f3 here the idea here is that if you play if you move your queen then queen g1 is threatened and if you play rook captures on f3 now you can take on b1 because there is no queen h6 uh and basically rook the the idea of rook h4 is delayed by an extra move in which case uh black is able to actually defend themselves uh, after rook f4 because i can actually play d1 queen here after rook h4 then very simply here queen f3 is actually checkmate uh, and there's no way to stop it, so uh, yeah, so that's how it, so that's how Black would be able to win. Uh, and also, I I had an extra 20 minutes on the clock still, so uh, variations like these are somewhat findable. Um, they are still a bit tricky, but they are somewhat findable uh, if I have 20 minutes on the clock. 
So quite a nice victory, uh, 26 moves it only took for a decisive result to be determined. Um, relatively happy with how this game went, uh, used some opening preparation I prepared before, converted it into a very nice position and very nice attacks on the queen side and slowly into the center and basically just had total control of the whole game. Um, and basically followed all the principles, brought all my pieces out, uh, attacked any weak points, managed to successfully convert this pawn here to d3. Very strong, supported by the knight as well as the bishop here and the queen. Um, and basically it was a very standard, very good game, very smooth, uh, no haphazards at all. And yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed this game and thanks for watching.